Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under the featured content. You just hit Mastering Probability. You can get it for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So you're not only going to get the newsletter, but what Steve has over there, he's done a huge amount of work on all the different tools that he used, and you get all of those tools also. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Just enjoying life, although I wish it was a little bit warmer outside. I'm telling you, man, this has been a strange six weeks, hasn't it? Yeah, for us, it was quite a, quite a weekend. The weather on Friday was so-so. Saturday was as beautiful as you can get. And yesterday was just, you know, all kinds of storms coming in and out. But Yeah, uh, we've had we, cold we, we, weather. Well, yeah, we for you you and I, we're, we're finishing up football and golf's going to be starting. So it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> golf is going. To, you know, they, uh, they played out of Pebble Beach this weekend. They got delayed. I uh, know. They shortened the round because of rain or what have you. So, like, yesterday, it wasn't much on. But, I, you know, again, I turned on the live tour. And I just don't really have that same endearing. You know, I love watching those players, but yep. it's just to me, it's just not the same. I know. It's definitely not the same. And no, I, just, I agree. It just yeah. hasn't drawn me into it. So it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. But, it it uh, really is, man. You talk, you, talk, like, you talk about playing with some big money, huh? I mean, all oh, around. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. absolutely. Hey, Tom, are you a fan of the Beach Boys? Did you go see the Beach oh, Boys yeah. at all? Were you, yeah, you I did? love the Beach okay. Boys. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So I thought today, you know, their they, their debut album came out, the Surf and Safari album came out in uh, 1962. Okay. They were searching for waves. We're going to go searching today for the uh, waves in the stock market. We're going to go it. try to find the uh, big one, all right? So I thought that's what we would do out Let's there. Let's do that. I love the Beach Boys, too. So just the, the music, for whatever reason, is you know, sometimes you get some music in your in your ears, your mind. It it's, just doesn't go away for a while. It's so happy music, man. It's unbelievable, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So their album debuted 62 years ago. Hard to believe, huh? Uh, 62 years ago. Damn. And uh, we're looking at the 96-year annual seasonal cycle chart for the S&P 500. So we're going to focus just today on the S&P 500. Now, the cool thing about this chart here. It's helped us just to try to understand just the normal wave pattern, at least over this time period, inside the S&P 500. What we can see here, and what I would like people to focus on, is really the little panel in the very bottom right-hand side. The cool yes. thing about okay. this, Tom, is it shows us by month what the typical results are. Now, I haven't gotten caught up into, you know, if you've got one month that just really outpaces the prior months, you know, is, is that... Does that mean that that month we're going to see volume? Instead, I'm looking at this as, as an up month or a down month. Yes. Just as simple as can be. Yes. And what we can see here is over a 96-year period, we typically see the unfavorable time periods being February, which we're in right now, okay. May, and September. Well, I also want to just simply point out, as I go through these slides with you and everybody else, that January here, over the 96-year seasonal cycle, January is a month that trades higher. And we know that our January traded much higher. Yes. So that's the first thing. So that's a 96-year seasonal cycle. We can take that same 96-year seasonal cycle and just limit it to the presidential election years. And those are all the boxes that are checked here. Again, what I want to do is focus on that bottom right-hand corner, which shows that January did trade higher. Also shows here February's lower, May's lower, typically September, October, and uh, December out there. Now, both these patterns here, because January traded higher, I consider these patterns from the wave standpoint to be in play out here. So whether it's this, the presidential seasonal cycle, because we did have January uh, trade up, I think that this is in play. If I take a look at the 96-year bullish seasonal cycle, so the folks here at Seasonex, they've identified those all the, all the years that are checked here, years that are just simply bullish. We can see here the interesting thing is that, if, again, if we look at the lower right, we'll see that February is the worst performing month. Now, January did close higher here, so I'm going to say that these three, the 96-year cycle patterns are definitely in play. Which one of them is it? That, that we don't know just yet, but they're definitely in play. Sometimes people might say, and I was out to dinner over the weekend on Saturday night with a good friend, and he's saying, you know, 96 years just might be too much. How about 25 years? So here's the 25-year annual seasonal cycle. 
What we can see here is January moves lower, so does February. So I'm saying that these, this 25-year seasonal cycle pattern isn't really in play because January closed lower out here. And if we take that same 25-year uh, uh, seasonal time frame, we can also go to the election cycle, but it only gives us really seven you know, data points, yes. only seven years here, Tom. But even over that period of time, we can see that both January and February had finished lower out there. So I'm saying that this pattern is likely not in play. If we go take a look at the 25-year bullish seasonal cycle chart out here, we can see that January is typically traded lower. So I don't really think that is in play out here. If we take a look and just minimize it to a five-year time frame, January, February, March are lower. Well, our January is higher. So I'm saying this wave is out of the equation right now. I and like so how you're breaking this down. Right? Yeah. So if we now summarize all of this, we just take a look at the wave structure over the, in this case here, we've limited, we've, we've identified that Perhaps it's a 96-year cycle patterns are in place out, in play out here. So I've got the presidential seasonal cycle up here on the right hand side. And what this shows is that we should expect or anticipate, if in fact this is the analog, February would trade lower. We get a nice rally into March. A couple move uh, move lower. A couple of, a couple of month move lower into May, and then we start the rally into the August time frame. If we're following this bullish period here, which after listening to your opening. Right. Of, of what's going on inside the markets and the volume scenario and everything. Yeah. And that prices want much higher prices out there. Well, this says, you know, February's maybe kind of choppy. Almost really sounded like when you were speaking. That's and right. I was looking at this chart. I'm like, geez, Tom's talking about the 96 year bullish cycle that's out there yes. uh, in the marketplace. So I really think it's one of those two cycles right now that is in uh, play out here. So what's all that mean? Well, if we take a look at the S&P 500, a retracement is not guaranteed out here. But if we do take a look at the S&P 500, and the reason why I say that is when I take a look at the S&P 500, how it is trading, how it is priced in euros, yen, pounds, Australian dollars, Swedish krona, those are at all new time highs today. They are, huh? So when you wow. say there's no sellers, you know, wow. the, the sellers that are in the market are being consumed by this group of traders. It's the folks that are sitting over in Europe, whether in the UK, whether you're in Paris or what have you, those people are looking at our markets saying, this is the, this is great. We're in breakout modes in yep. terms of their currency pairs. And even in terms of the Swiss franc and Chinese yuan and the Canadian loony, we can see these nice uptrends that are out here. Yes. So there's a lot of international buyers that we have. Now, if the S&P 500 does move lower into uh, February. The price target that I would have to the downside is the actual low for the year, and that's at 46.82. This chart here, Tom, identifies the low or the high that comes in the first week, the first two weeks of uh, January out here. And we can see, going back to 2023, we can see that when price did pull back, it really pulled back to that level, and then it continued to move higher. In 2022, it was never, even, it never even looked back, right? It was just a continued move to the downside. In 2021, where I've got this 3662 level, again, we can see that we had a pullback, but it never busted through that level out there. So folks, I would suggest watching 4682 if we get a pullback out there. And this chart, the final one, Tom, just to match what you were saying in the beginning, this has the S&P 500 on a monthly basis targeting the 5300 area. And we're at 4970, folks. You can see all the great tools, folks, that Steve has out here. It's really easy to get his newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go into featured content. You had hit master in probability, and you're going to be very happy you did. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. You might.